So what happens if an injury happens like this patient unfortunately loses a whole arm? Now they lost their whole arm, but say they, but do they lose that part of the brain? Well, their arm got chopped off. That doesn't mean that part of the brain dies off. But what if that part of the brain that used to control that arm and feel sensations from that arm all of a sudden get some sort of action potentials and activity? Well, this is what we call phantom limb syndrome. And there's been some interesting responses on Packback about it. So phantom limb syndrome, again, just because you lose a limb doesn't mean you lose that part of the brain. Something, that part of the brain is still there somehow. So the thing is that if you have activation of these somatosensory neurons that used to sense, used to sense that part of the body that was lost, it can still cause pain and sensation. Even though that body part is still not physically there, they feel that uh, the pa patients who experience pa phantom limb syndrome, they feel the pain is real to them. Even though it's not physically there, it's, these neurons are causing sensations that's uh, causing them to experience this excruciating pain. Or sometimes it's tingling. It depends. That's a, but again, it's some sort of sensation on a body part that's not there. Now, this is, in, at least from the review I read, linked down here, this is back in 2018, and so what causes phantom limb syndrome? Does Do these neurons fire at random? Well, one, so in this review, it says like, okay, here's a dorsal root ganglion from a spinal nerve, and say something, you have ab aberrant signals, so abnormal signals that travel along the spinal cord and end up at the somatosensory cortex and causing phantom limb syndrome from that amputated limb. So that's one theory. Another theory is what I mentioned earlier. What if these neurons in the somatosensory cortex all of a sudden just activate by themselves? So it's, uh, there's still research going on to whether it's caused by the cortex. Is it caused by these dorsal root ganglia? Is it caused by else, something else, like these nerve endings over here? So they're still trying to say, like, is it the CNS, is it the, the peripheral nervous system, or is it both? Oh, okay, over here, let's ask the chat. What do you think they're experiencing, all these people here? Yeah, so heartburn or even worse, maybe a heart attack. So what we're going to talk about is a special type of pain, and broken heart in a sense. So the thing is that here is where your heart is located. So it's central, slightly, and the apex of the heart points down a little toward your left. So it's in the center-ish, but a little more towards the left. That's where your heart is. So that's why they're probably like, if, um, if they're not having heartburn, well, what might they be having? So the interesting thing is that when your heart experiences what you call a heart attack, and the medical term for that is a myocardial infarction, well, sometimes people get pain in the middle of their chest, but sometimes they feel it in their neck, their left neck, they feel it in their entire pectoral muscle, or sometimes that they feel pain radiating all the way down their left arm. So this is why you call it referred pain. So is your heart in your arm? It's not in your arm, but if something's caught, uh, if a heart attack is affecting your heart, it can cause pain in your arm, even though your heart is located in the center of your chest. So this is common in myocardial infarctions. So this is why people who experience a heart attack, they're like, ooh, I'm feeling this kind of like, it feels like a squeezing in my chest and then like my left arm is tingling or feeling numb. So that's what referred pain is. And why do we get referred pain? Well, this is from the Martini version. I don't think OpenStax actually has a picture of this. But what we have here, well, it's interesting. The liver and gallbladder and is the liver and gallbladder up here in your shoulder. Not really, right? And you do have things like the ureters, and your ureters actually run from your kidneys down to your bladder. But notice that it's more lateral in this picture. So what we're getting here with referred pain is that, well, look at this list. If you later on look at this list, do you see the heart anywhere on this? Not really, right? So this is the interesting thing about how your internal organs are wired. They're not quite, they don't have a somatosensory cortex part actually is that says only heart that you feel it right in your heart so it's kind of actually mapped throughout different regions so again your internal organs aren't on this homunculus so this is kind of why referred pain happens it's just your body decides to map it to another part of the body that's kind of associated with that area all right, so we talked about sensation. So I'm going to try to cover motor pathways and it can get very complicated. Keep it limited to what I'm going to cover. 
So we just finished talking about, again, all of these ascending pathways going up into your brain and causing sensations. 